the BBC production of Brecht's first play, Baal, or as they call it in the Radio Times, appropriately acknowledging the importance of the star David Bowie in Baal. Recognising the contribution of the director, Alan Clark, they might as well have thrown his name into the title as well. It's an extraordinary and certainly arresting play about a poet who makes his savage way through life, seducing women, abandoning unborn children and murdering his closest friend. It's set in Germany before World War I, uh, and every theatrical Brechtian device is used to keep the narrative driving along. David Lodge, what did you make of it as a whole? Well, I thought it was a very creditable attempt at uh, an almost impossible task. I think that putting Brecht on television is, is always difficult, and putting this particular play particularly difficult. I think that part of the difficulty is that Brecht's drama is um, anti-naturalistic. That was his major contribution to modern theatre. And television tends towards a naturalistic treatment of narrative. And um, secondly, that um, there are problems about this particular play. Um, I thought that they solved the technical problems very well, mm. using split screen, um, using as we just saw, as we just yes. saw, using uh, um, stage sets rather than films for location, which would have been disastrous, and on the whole, avoiding kind of close-ups that television usually uses in drama, and keeping the camera somewhere away from the action, so that one had a sense for slightly theatrical quality about it and that was producing what Brecht wanted to produce which was uh, a consciousness in the audience that we were watching something artificial but I mean the purpose of that in the Brecht theory is to make you think about the play and the issues it raises and what the point of it is and when we come to this particular play I think that becomes something of a problem um, what representative significance does this hero have mm. he's uh, a totally unregenerate, dissolute, uh, rather nasty piece of work who um, ne there is no reversal in his story, he just goes on as he begins and most of the characters around him are rather thin stereotypes and frankly I mean when I watched the program I couldn't make up my mind what, what the play was really about when I read it afterwards I thought that perhaps um, the, the name of the hero is the key, I mean Baal was a sort of fertility deity, uh, one of the devils to the Israelites. Um, I think he represents a kind of uh, natural, non-ethical, primitive energy that fascinated Brecht. The idea that there's some person who um, could act any way he liked if he wasn't prepared to weaken and give in to any sort of Christian or other kind of ethic. Um, there is, he's associated very much with the country and nature and he's, his um, companion who he murders is associated with the coming of a more urban kind of civilization. So it seems to me possibly one could interpret the, the play along those lines. But it is a first play and a rather confused one, I think. Diana. I doubt whether the um, play would have any interest or validity for us now if it were not the first work of Bertolt Brecht who went on to create great drama. Um, I've seen it several times before in other productions and I've also read it and I continue to find the play impenetrable. But to build on what David was saying, clutching at straws somewhat, it seems to me that uh, Baal at the beginning of the play says something about he will have his sky down here on earth below. Mm -hmm. And almost the last line of the play is the, the, sky, the, is still, the sky is still up there and the sky goes on. Beyond that, I, I must confess to being confused, though I would like to put in a word for the valiant efforts made by the actors. I thought they did a splendid job in, in the face of rather uh, inflexible material. There's something I'd like to ask you in a minute. And first. Well, I agree with both of you on this. The problems of the piece seem to me to lie not really in the production or in the performances, which in every case, really, I thought were extremely well done, but in the piece itself. If one's right in thinking that Baal is somebody who is bringing himself down as far as he can go in order to find out what is the kind of rock bottom of human nature and then perhaps or perhaps not build on it, that obviously is all of a piece with the process of alienation which in technical terms the play is at pains to create for us a sense of ourselves as audience and of the thing itself as artifact. But I felt that scene after scene, while it set up tableaus in which this alienation was evident didn't really allow the actors to get hold of very much and to show their merits. When David Bowie opened his mouth and sang, he was tremendous, I thought, but 
while he was speaking the lies. There wasn't very much for him to Let's to stay say. on Bowie for a moment, mm. and then we'll come back to what the play is about. Did you think Bowie well cast? Yes, I did. I did. I, I especially liked it when he sang the Lament for Joanna, which is one of my favourite songs anyway. Uh, he had tremendous attack, didn't yes. he? Yes. I, I, I he was sort of cast as kind of, you know, thinking man skinhead, really, wasn't he? With the braces and the boots and this kind of you know, aggressive, totally uncompromising stance. And I, th mm. I thought that that, you know, was, was quite a good updating of the the figure, in a way, the, the way he projected. I like the way he sang the songs. I like the way he stared out at the camera mm. aggressively yeah, he did everything the audience. With this, yeah. with, with very and intelligent, he, too, I thought. You couldn't have had a better person to play that role, I think. All right. Yeah. Well, then, Brecht was okay. And the, and the actors you've already spoken well uh, about. Uh, I'm surprised uh, to hear you suggest that um, it's more penetrable on a stage. I mean, I've never seen it on a stage. I would have thought, with all those split screens and everything else, it was more penetrable on, on a screen. You have seen it on the stage. I have seen it on stage. I, I was a lot younger then. Um, I, for me, the, the way that it was directed worked, except that I would take issue with, with Dave, what David said about um, the distancing effect and not ever being allowed to get too close to the actors, because I found once or twice in the large scenes where there were a lot of extras on the stage that, that what. I couldn't hear what was being mm -hmm. sung or I spoken that, behind yeah. them. On the other hand, that is what Brecht wants, isn't it? He wants mm -hmm. to be distanced from the characters, yeah. but absolutely going with the story. That's the, that's well, the theory. Well, I it? hope you're right, mm -hmm. Sir Hugh. I, I, th I, I always hesitate whenever the, the subject of Brecht's theory of alienation yes. comes up because it seems to me that the way that he theorised in his own writings is often very different from his own practice in, in the plays that he wrote. Was it worth putting on, do you think? Well, yes, I mean, that trouble. Well, Alan well, Clark did well. Um, you know, hats off to the BBC to, to put it on and put it on BBC One. Um, I mean, I think this is the kind of play, if I'd um, given up a whole evening to go to the theatre mm -hmm. and, you know, paid 12 pounds for tickets and got a babysitter you would have been and everything very else. disappointed. I'd have been disappointed. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm very glad to have seen it. It's, it's a, a most interesting document. It's um, yeah, a, a play by one of the great playwrights of the modern period. Well, it's um, arresting, all right. I, you know, it's yeah. under my hat now and I'm very glad to have seen it. I don't think it was really 100% success and I don't think it could have been, probably. Last word. I think it's a young man's play written out of terrible spleen.